In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
quicken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Word of God, word 
good life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
glory to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Christ. Please. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. There are many changes that you experience when you become older. And some of them I anticipate. I anticipate, for example, the grain in the hair. I mean, that's a common experience that you become older. I also anticipated the wrinkles. But this one I did not anticipate. This change. And that is a somewhat frequent uh, battle with insomnia. Either I go I fall asleep quickly, and then wake up in the middle of the night, only to start solving all the world's problems, or I can't go to sleep, and I struggle until finally, way late in the early hours of the morning, I finally fall asleep. And this is strange for me, because as a child, they said I never had any problem sleeping. As a matter of fact, they always had a problem uh, waking me up. I was always the one that was a good sleeper. And even when I was in graduate school, I remember being able to drink two cups of coffee and go to bed and not be served by the caffeine. But that's not the case at all. I struggle sometimes with sleep. Herbert Barkerin, who is a poet and also wrote a number of lyrics for hymns that are in our hymnal, wrote a book once about his spiritual struggle with an insomnia called Hello Night. And in that book, he talks about his battles in a way that is both insightful and also inspirational. Now, this experience is kind of strange whenever you, you read that story about the five wise bridesmaids and the five unwise bridesmaids, foolish bridesmaids, and Jesus ends that with a command, keep awake. I am awake. What I need to do, literally, is to fall asleep. Now, this is really important. Now, when he reviewed, Jesus said, keep awake, he was not talking about always losing sleep and staying awake. But rather, he was using sleep in terms of a spiritual experience. The Bible constantly does this where certain common activities are given spiritual significance. Let me give you a few examples. For example, walking is often not just simply about how you put one foot in front of the other, but it's also about how you live. Be careful how you walk. The Bible is not saying don't stub your toe on a root or anything like that, but be careful where you are going. Another one, see. Jesus talked to told people who actually could see that they were blind. Another trait was hearing, you know, as in hear O Israel, washing, planting, harvesting. All these things are common everyday activities that Jesus gave spiritual significance to. 
too. And sleeping was like it. He was not saying, lose sleep, stay awake at all times, but rather, keep focus. You know, I heard a story about Thomas Edison. You know, Thomas Edison, the famous inventor that uh, invented the light bulb and, and also the, the, the photograph. Thomas Edison bragged about the fact that he could live off two hours of sleep each night. That's all he needed, two hours. And this was kind of like a badge of honor. And so one of his biographers followed him around. And he noticed that while Thomas, Jefferson, uh, Thomas Edison only slept for two hours, that oftentimes he was napping throughout the day at his desk, reading the paper on the train. He took naps frequently. So Jesus is not saying, always stay awake or rock yourself asleep, but rather make sure you are focused on the task that God has given you to do. Actually, I think sleep is a good part of self-care. Sleep helps you by in so many ways and also helps your emotions. I was reading an article about stress and how to deal with stress during difficult times. And this is a difficult time as, as you know, the light diminishes, things get darker, and also there's things like a pandemic going on, all kind of chaos throughout the world. It's easy to become stressed. And the Mayo Clinic said that there were seven building blocks of resiliency during stressful times. One, maintaining social ties. Make sure you're connected to other people. Even if you're so physically distanced or socially distanced, Make sure you're still connected to those people that you love and those people who lift you up. Another is practice relaxation. Maybe breathing techniques or maybe just sitting still for a while. Another is disconnecting from the media. This says really if you only need about 15 to 30 minutes of news every day, but sometimes we're connected to the news cycle all day long, either through the internet or some other type of media. Another one is exercise, getting some physical activity. You know the old saying, if you want to change your emotion, then change your motion. Get active, get involved. The other one is sleeping, uh, eating well, and then finally they talk about sleep that I just mentioned, that it boosts your emotional uh, state and also your immune system. And but finally I think this one is more about what Jesus was talking about. Finding purpose and joy. Finding purpose and joy. What is your calling? What has God called you to do? And that's a key thing to keep in focus during your life. You know, throughout the scriptures, it, it talks about sin, and they use many different words to talk about sin. Some of them are like open rebellion against God. That's one type of sin. But a lot of them are just like missing the mark or just straying off course. It's just something that happens gradually over time. And it's not really something that's a dramatic rebellion against God, but rather just losing sight of what it is God wants you to do. And losing sight of your purpose and your joy. The story of the bride's maids reminds us of that. The five foolish ones were the same as the other five wise ones. They had one job. To greet the bridegroom whenever he came. And like the foolish ones, the wise ones also fell asleep whenever the bridegroom was delayed. But the one had, the five had the task at hand in being prepared. They had one job, as they, we would say, and that was to greet the 
bridegroom. That was their will. That was their God's will for their lives. That was God's purpose. And so the question is, what is your God's will for you? Oftentimes it's very general and very close to you. You know, our mission statement, for example, here at St. John's Lutheran is very simple. To know the love of God, to show the love of Christ. That's our mission statement. But the way it's carried out in your life is very personal and also multifaceted. We have many callings. Callings to our friends, callings to our job, callings to our family, callings to our neighbor. Being an evangelist, spreading the good news of God to those who have yet to hear and also those who have yet to respond. That's a calling as well. What is your call? What is your purpose and joy in this life? That's impossible for me to answer for you. And it's actually difficult for me to answer for myself. But we are given the promise that when we seek, we will find. And so therefore, Jesus tells us as well, keep away. Focus on your purpose and your joy. Even today, during this stressful time, God, in our waiting, is with us. So we rely upon Him. Amen. Amen.
Thank mm-hmm. you.